I've always been told that a short half-life is more dangerous and provides a higher dose than materials with an extremely long half-life. Is this true? No, not really. I understand the concept. So let's look at the equation for activity. So here, here we go. There's the, act, the, the equation. The activity is equal to the natural log of 2. It's just a constant. So the natural log of 2 times the number of atoms. So if I double the number of radioactive atoms that are there, I double the amount of radioactivity divided by the half-life. So if I make a really, really short half-life, then that means the activity goes up really, really high. But with a really, really short half-life, even though the activity goes up really, really high, it goes away quite quickly. Meaning that, that uh, the activity will exponentially decay with the decay constant. The decay constant is the natural log of 2 divided by the, uh, the half-life. And so if I have a high activity with a low half-life, that means it just goes away really quickly. So it's not quite as simple as that. It comes down to how much are you exposed to and for how long. Um, that's really the, the, the issue. And so it, it, it can really fold itself into anti-nuclear narratives for people that say, well, it's got a, a long half-life, so it's more dangerous. Or it's got a smaller half-life, so it's more dangerous. The real risk is always in the dose. And that means how much have you been exposed to? And it's not an issue if it's got a short half-life or a long half-life. It's how much you've been exposed to. Um, so I hope that helps. I don't know. Um, uh, I appreciate the question. I hope I answered it. Let me know if not. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.